Welcome to HB RV Lifestyle. They call me the honey badger because I give it to you straight in the RV business. Today's video is a very important one with a lot of information that's going to help you, the consumer. If you're planning on buying something in the next six months, selling your current RV, trading it in, doesn't matter if you're buying from a dealer, doesn't matter if you're doing a private party, this information is going to be beneficial for you for here December 2023 and up through summer of 2024. So let's get started. I'm gonna cover four major topics. The first one being year model 2023 versus year model 2024 and give you the truth behind why the factories don't really want me to talk about this. The second thing I'm gonna cover is RV financing. So RV loans, we're gonna go over interest rates, we're gonna go over where I see things going uh, from here, December 2023 through summer of 2024. Uh, I'm also gonna sprinkle in a little bit about why it may not be a good idea for you to pay cash for an RV. That's gonna be very interesting to see the comments on that one. The third thing I'm gonna cover is about parts and service. Especially during the winter, there becomes a lot of confusion about warranty work and why parts take so long to get to the dealership lot during the winter. So I'm gonna cover that. And the last thing I'm going to cover, this is going to probably be the coupe de gras, is the used RV market and where it sits. Now, I'm going to sprinkle information about used through the other three segments. So if you skip all to the end just to listen to used RVs, you might miss some context. 2023 year model versus 2024 year model. Now, if you look behind me, I got two R pods right there. One's a 2024 and one's a 2023. Can you tell the difference right now? No, you can't. So let's go on the inside. This is the interior of a 2024 R pod travel trailer. You guys see that? It's a quick view. You see how all the color of the cabinetry, color of the cushions. These are the outside graphics, rims, and tires of a 2024 R-Pod. This is the interior of a 2023 R-Pod. Same color cabinets, same co color cushions, and then just quickly on the outside, the graphics and the rims and tires are identical. So where am I going with this? Let's go back to summer 2023, summer of this year. Hundreds of thousands of dollars were spent by the umbrella companies, the big manufacturers, stating, and I'm paraphrasing big time here, guys, okay? So pardon me, I'm gonna be a little exaggerated, that they were gonna reinvent the wheel for 2024, that the year model 2024s were gonna be completely different, something you've never seen before. Okay, there are some exceptions. But for the most part, they didn't do nothing. They didn't do squat different, okay? And I'll explain why in a minute. But for the most part, they didn't do nothing but either A, strip the trailers down to where there's a lot less in them, or B, kept it the status quo and just raised their prices a little bit. Now they didn't raise their prices like they did during COVID, don't get me wrong, but on the stuff that didn't have a bunch of stuff taken out. So here's, here's a good example. So I have a Springdale 1800BH here. Ooh, we got a helicopter. Helicopter inbound. That was kind of cool to have a helicopter fly by. Anyway, getting back to it. I have a 2023 Springdale 1800BH on the lot. It's as loaded as you can get it. Has the full solar panel, inverter, the big battery pack, everything Springdale offered for 2023. And it comes in as a dealer invoice. What we paid for it right around 20 grand. Well, what they did was they stripped off the solar panel, stripped off the battery pack, put a crank down uh, tongue jack, put only two stabilizers instead of four, and put a side mounted air conditioner that goes in your wall and no furnace, and they cut the cost down to 15 grand. That's not innovating anything. That's taking crap out of the trailer. Now, what's interesting is I've talked to dealers that have that new decontented stuff and they're having a rough time selling it unless the people have bad credit 
And the reason why is because you, the RV consumer, are not stupid. You guys are very intelligent people. Most of you have disposable income. Most of you are up, you know, middle class or above. The majority of you are smart with money. You're not gonna go, oh, you dropped the price five grand. Wait a minute, there's no solar. Hey, wait a minute, there's no inverter. And by the time I add all that stuff back in, I'm right back to 20 grand. So it's just, it, it boggles my mind how they think that the American people are stupid. It, it really boggles my mind. Now, there are some exceptions to this. And I wanna throw this in there because I love him because most people are going, why is Josh the RV nerd not exposing this? Let me tell you why. Because Josh works for a major corporation. He's built a great following, a great audience, and there's a lot of risk in exposing this. He risks relationships with the factories. He risks relationships with the corporation he works for. Now, more than likely, old the Josh, old Josh the RV nerd that didn't work for a major corporation probably would have done the same thing I'm doing right now. So it's probably not like he doesn't want to do it. It's like, hey man, you know, there's a lot of risk involved in exposing this. Now, the few exceptions are like the Salem View. Or uh, here's another exception, uh, is uh, Grand Design uh, Solitude came out with a fifth wheel that is a two queen bed fifth wheel, okay? Not a bunkhouse, a two queen bed fifth wheel, kind of like a park model floor plan. Um, let's see, what other kind of little exceptions I could give you? Um, off the top of my head, really nothing, but stuff like that. There's small little innovative things. Oh, here's another one. Ibex, Forest River Ibex came out with a kind of weird park model, okay? And I call it weird because I would never have it here on the lot because it's just strange. But I'll say this, hey man, if you're thinking outside of the box, hey, I give you credit. Whether it works or not is a whole different scenario. Now, that's the major brands. Now, the smaller independents like Genesis Supreme RV out here on the West Coast, he completely revamped everything. Now, he revamped it because of the fact that he has to revamp. You have to revamp more on the West Coast with toy haulers because of the size of the side-by-sides. So he had to redo a lot of what he was doing in 2023 in 2024. And I actually cover that in a playlist that I'll also link in the description box below. So there are a few exceptions and there's always a few exceptions guys, because here's the truth. This is what the factory doesn't want me to tell you. They cannot afford as an independent brand to change things every single year because their purchaser buys things in massive bulk. So when they go out, they have Forest River, each division, Keystone, uh, Grand Design, Winnebago, all these guys go out with their purchasers and go buy massive bulk product for the year model. And they usually order enough for two year models. So if you notice, like, I'll give you a great example. My, my buddy that works at Coachman Freedom Express, one of my favorite trailers I've ever sold on a dealership lot. I remember when 2000 and, let's see, it was 2017. They had the ugliest front cap on God's green earth in 2017. And they carried that cap over into 2018, at least the beginning of it. About the mid-year, mid-model year of 2018, they changed everything because it had been three years. So usually every three to four years is when a factory really makes changes. Exception is toy haulers. Except for, of course, we won't mention certain names, but there are certain brands, certain manufacturers that just do the status quo all the time. But for the most part, toy hauler brands have to change things yearly to keep up with the toys. But the rest of them, about every four years, three to four years, okay? So here's another example, just to give you a quick one. We're gonna go to Surveyor. So this is a 2024 Surveyor. 
see how the graphics look and everything. Okay, let's go inside. This is the interior of a 2024 Surveyor. It's pretty cute. This is a 2023 Surveyor. So you see the graphics on the exterior are all the same. And when we go inside, the cabinets are all the same. Everything's the same. So 2023, 2024, nothing's different. I do have an exception on my lot and that's Coachman Catalina. But see, Catalina has been doing the same thing for three years, so they were due for a change. So I'll show you some of the changes they just made. So what Catalina did was they went to a black stripe graphic and went to this dark gray at the bottom. So the graphics and exterior look different on the Catalina and they put a leveling system on the bigger coaches. And the interior is different. This was not light. This was like a dark brown. So they did make their normal every three to four year change, but nothing innovative. Everything's exactly what you can get in other units. Another exception I didn't mention yet is Brinkley RV. Brinkley is an independent company who's not governed by these umbrella corporations like Winnebago and Forest River and Thor. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. And we're gonna segue now into RV financing. First, I wanna start for those that are newbies. This is for you. There's three things that affect an interest rate on an RV. The first thing is the dollar amount financed or and it slash the term of the loan, okay? Because I guess credit unions, you'd say term, Banks, we say dollar amount financed. The second thing that affects an interest rate is how much percentage you're putting down. So at zero down, you have a higher interest rate than if you put 20% down, okay? And the last thing is your <clears throat> credit score or internal score with the bank or credit union. And I'll cover that in a minute. So first off, the interest rates are still between eight and 11% for good credit. Now, most of you are like, oh my God, 10%, 9%. Okay, I get it. We haven't had those kind of rates in a long time. And for those of you that are generation uh, Z or millennials, you've never seen it because the last time it happened, you were in high school. Okay, I've been in this a long time. I've seen rates at 16% for really good credit. So that's how far back I go. I've seen rates in a good economy be seven or eight percent for good credit. So it's all in the eye of the beholder. If you are, a, and I'm just gonna throw this out here real quick. If you are a price buyer, this is the best market you've had all year. You may have one more shot at it next winter or fall. But let me tell you guys, if, you're, if you have bought an RV this year, you saved a bunch of money. And by the way, if you did buy an RV this year, let me know in the comments section below. If you're buried in a trade, my God, guys, if you spent MSRP during COVID and you wanna trade out of your rig, guys are going bending over backwards to get you out of your trade. I just bent over backwards four times this month with people that paid sticker on an RV during COVID. And I worked hard and got them alone. So it's that kind of time right now where every deal is precious. Now, does that mean, oh, I'm gonna get them 75% off. I'm gonna get them for 10 cents on the dollar. No, it's never gonna get that bad. But you can get it for some, some products that I sell personally and across the country, other dealers uh, sell, you get for 50 cents on the dollar. So 50% off MSRP. Uh, some of them are 40, some are 30. Everybody's got a different markup. But the one thing about banks right now getting back into RV financing, the banks right now have changed a lot when it comes to how they score a loan. So what it means is your FICO score of 800 no longer matters. They have their own internal score. And what that means is, here's the bottom line about it. I've noticed something, if you're retired you're gonna score lower with the bank than you will if you have a job. I've noticed that. When you have a guy 
I had a lady retired 827 FICO, retired 827 FICO, putting 25% down, and she was a tier four at three out of the five banks. Retired nurse. Now, I got a guy that's been an engineer, 726 score, engineer, 20 years on the job, not retiring for like another two years, two and a half years, tier one. 726 FICO, tier one. So the entire system is changing towards, they don't want you to really be retired when you first get the RV loan. They want you to get the RV loan while you're still working. That's how their algorithm's looking. Now, part of that might be that maybe the banks know something we don't about Social Security, or maybe they, they know something about where the market's going for your 401k. I don't know. I just know that they score, their internal score right now does not like it when you're retired. They like it better when you have a job. The other thing that the algorithm seems to really like, their algorithm that they have, is they seem to like people that have a lot of paid auto loans. <clears throat> Not necessarily a mortgage, but I noticed also that a 680, I just had a 687 uh, score, uh, score a tier two at one of the banks. He's got a little bit of credit card debt. That's why he's, and he's got a collection on his uh, thing for Verizon. That's the only thing lowering his credit. And yet, he's got a lot of great paid auto loans. Pays them in like two, three, four years. He doesn't take them out the full six or the full seven years. He pays them off early. Um, not too early. But banks seem to like that. So that's something that I'm, I'm thinking is, is going to be down the line. Now, when this, ha this happened before when I was in this business. This happened right after Trump took office for about six months we ran into something a little uh, uh how i put we ran into something similar to this so do not just strictly go down to your credit union and say okay i'll just go down to my credit union then okay that doesn't help you getting advice from your credit union getting pre-approved from your credit union helps you but just go i'll just go down to my credit union oh okay well i'm gonna teach you something why that's not a good idea okay give me a second What most dealerships are going to probably do is start using credit unions. And let me tell you something. When you go off and get your own money, you lose all negotiation power. And okay? I'll give you a great example. Cash buyers and people who seek their own financing and won't let the dealer at least attempt to get the financing for you. You've lost all negotiation power. Now, while dealerships are willing to take deep losses right now, they have to recover some of the cash. So how do you recover it? Well, the bank pays what we call a kickback. They pay you a kickback to give them the loan. And without that kickback, there's really no way for you to negotiate a deal. There's no incentive for the dealership to help you get out of something or even into something. Now, there are exceptions to this. The exceptions are on older units. When it's an older used unit, Get your own financing set up first, period. Okay, because most of the banks only let you borrow seven years and newer. There are some they'll do 10, some they'll do 12, but for the most part, uh, most lenders are gonna go back seven years. So just make sure that you get pre-approved with your credit union if you're buying a pre-owned unit, something that's used, maybe a little older, maybe you think cheaper's better. Uh, things of that nature. Now, speaking about used real quick, I got a guy that came in on a used 2002 toy hauler I had for eight grand. And he was looking for a $150 a month payment. And he did everything he was supposed to. He did everything right he was humanly supposed to do, okay? He went and get his calculator. He knew he didn't have very good credit, but didn't know that he couldn't get a 2002 financed. So just because a unit is cheaper doesn't lower the payment or give you the money or, or the, the ability to get a loan on it, okay? Um, what I would do if I were in anybody's shoes, if you're a first-time buyer of anything, 
what I would do is get pre-approved out of your local credit union for a certain dollar amount and look at the payment and the interest rate and do your calculation. And once you've done your calculation, let's say you're a $200 a month buyer, and let's say I approve you at 12% seven-year loan, reverse that and find out how much does that buy me? Okay, it buys me 17 grand as an example. That's probably a bad example, but buys me 17 grand. Okay, now I can start looking for new and used for around 17 grand. Okay, let's talk about parts and service now. Parts and service is tough, man, especially in December, January. So let me give you, again, I'm gonna get slapped around for this by the factories, but the reason why it takes, there's three reasons why during the winter, it's really hard to get parts, okay? And it's really hard to get warranty work done. Let's start with the most obvious one. The most obvious one is weather, okay? Weather, like we're getting, a lot of places are getting their first snow, okay? Oregon's getting its first snow in a lot of places. Missouri just had a snowstorm. Kansas had a big, huge sandstorm. So, I'm sorry, not sandstorm, snowstorm. Um, so you're gonna get ice, you're gonna get cold weather. It, it, it's gonna be brutal, it always is. Every winter I've ever done this, even before COVID, it was a pain in the butt to get warranty work and parts done. So be patient with your local service shop and dealership. I always, I, I always try to tell people this. This is where um, like my experience helps out is I tell people all the time, look, during the winter, go take your rig down. Let's say it's a, um, I don't know, let's say it's an AC issue. You're not gonna use your AC during the winter, right? So after they diagnose it, put it through warranty claim, take the sucker home. Okay, it's gonna, otherwise it'll just sit on the dealership lot for six or eight weeks because it's just not worth it, right? So you can still use it. Maybe you got family members coming over for the holidays and you wanna stick them in the trailer so that way, you know, or the fifth wheel so that way they have a place to sleep and don't have to spend money on a hotel. That's a very common thing this time of year. Um, you know, if it's something like the refrigerator is dead, and you're only using it for, again, I'm only using it to sleep and house people. Everybody's gonna have dinner and stuff in my house. Take it home with you. Let them go through the process. Otherwise, you're just gonna get frustrated, okay? The second reason why is because this time of year, especially starting around December 5th and 6th, up through about the end of January is when a lot of this industry starts taking vacation. That's probably the one thing that people don't realize is we are busier than a hornet's nest off and on from about mid-February through Thanksgiving. And so most of this industry from the factory workers to the reps, to the managers like myself, to my techs, to salespeople, to finance people, they take vacations during the winter, similar to how athletes or, or uh, not all athletes, but like baseball players and tennis players and, and uh, actors and actresses, what they do during the winter. And the third one, which is the least, is bonus time. So I won't mention names because that's unfair, but general managers from Grand Design to Forest River to Winnebago to Keystone all the way around, they get paid a bonus on the profit or production for the entire year. And they get that bonus, but all the warranty claims get deducted from those proceeds. So they try to delay the approval as long as they humanly can, as long as they legally can. So that way they can get a little bit nicer bonus check. So it's about money at that point. Does it mean they'll never get to it? No, it means that they, they humbly tried to play off the other two things. But the other two things I mentioned, the weather and uh, the vacation stuff, that's more likely all the time. There is a few bad apples. I'm not gonna tell you who the bad apples are because I'll probably get fired, number one. 
and number two, then I'll get probably blacklisted out of this industry and then you'd have nobody to be transparent with, right? Or, or you have nobody to give you this information. All right, time to talk about the used market. The used market sucks right now. It sucks for private party sellers and people that want to buy private party. The reason why people like to buy private party, if you don't know, is because in I think 12 or 13 states, you don't pay sales tax if you buy private party. So their idea is, well, I'll put up with fixing up all the other crap on it. I just don't want to give the government any more of my, uh, I don't want to give the government any more of my money. Even when I'm priced below what a private party person is out the door by let's say five or 600 bucks, they'll still go buy the private party because they know part of the money I'm collecting is going to sales tax. So there's just people like that. But the tough part is a lot of this industry is financing. You're, you're getting some type of loan on it. Some people take a loan out of their 401k, a second out on their house, refinance their house, take equity out. Everybody does some form of financing for the most part. There are very few pure cash buyers in this industry. Here's what it boils down to. Dealerships are able to sell new travel trailers and RVs for less money or newer used stuff for less money than what private party people are willing to sell their units for. Great example I have, and I haven't released the video yet, but I was looking for a small travel trailer for a young lady that was getting abused. Her husband is abusing her and her two kids. And I had, a, I had enough money, I'm like, I can buy like a 2009 or 2010 smaller one doesn't have to have a slide everybody wanted fifteen thousand dollars for those things 15 grand well i paid i paid 20 in two years ago yeah man i can sell a brand new one for 15 grand you know i mean that's not 15 years old but that's kind of where the market is the used market on the private party section of the market sucks right now that the, the everything's overpriced and people were unreasonable. I mean, we're, we're back to 2017, 18, and 19 prices on used. We're back to that. So I have some advice for people. Here's my advice to you. Stay away from the private party market. Look only for dealerships. Okay, The only reason to buy private party is if you just don't want to give the government any money. Okay. The other reason not to buy to, to not buy from a dealer and buy from a private party is if they don't have it. If it's the only one you can find is through a private seller. And you're gonna run into that from time to time, especially on diesel pushers and and and, and luxury fifth wheels. Those usually get sold private party. Not too often do those people trade them in. It happens, but it's rare. Okay. But if you're looking for something simple like a small travel trailer or maybe a used fifth wheel toy hauler. Look at the dealership market first. Doesn't matter where you live. You live in Florida, Canada, Washington State, Miami, or sorry, Miami, Maine. Doesn't matter. Look at the dealership market first before you reach out to private party. That's just advice, okay? The other thing you really, really, really want to understand is they're lending less on used. They're going back to, it's old school, man. It's going back to 2017, 18, 19 values. Uh, I have a, a bullet travel trailer here I uh, that's used on consignment. Uh, the guy wanted to originally get 25 grand for it. I'm like, dude, I can get a loan for 15.5. I mean, I might be able to squeeze $16,000 out for it. And when I explained to him how it works, He's one of the more reasonable people and goes, well, crap, I'll do that. Okay, there we go. Uh, I got a guy right now that consigned a Miramar uh, Class A motorhome. He's happy just to get out of it. He's like, holy cow, man, you think you can get me out of it? I go, yeah, you you, you got enough down payment. or I get some of the seven or eight grand down, which is reasonable on Class A motorhome. They can get a loan through a credit union or through a bank. So it's not a big deal. But it's the people that want astronomical money for something that's not valued. And here's why they value that stuff so high. They value that stuff so high is because they add every single option on NADA or on JD Power. And that's not the way it works, guys. When it comes to lending, you don't get to add anything. You go off the base price. That's how lending works. 
Some credit unions, yeah, they might do some ads. Maybe. But for the most part, they're not stupid. They're not going to lend 115% of all the ads you put on it on a 15-year-old coach. Don't work that way. Right? Maybe I'm wrong. But I've been doing it 15 years, so I, I got to have some insight to it, right? Trade-in values have gone plummeted. They're going to continue to plummet. They're not going to change. They're not going to get any better. If you have a trade-in right now, I mentioned this earlier. If you have a trade-in right now and you're buried in it, this is the market to get out of it. Couldn't get out of it a year ago, but you can get out of it now. Trust me. So if you guys made it all the way to the end of this video, thank you so much. Please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. And I put the playlist for all my RV finance videos in the top right-hand corner.